This is a $2,000 camera. This is a $500,000 camera. And this is Chris. Hi, I'm Chris, and I make unnecessary camera comparison videos. Why? Because they get views, baby. <laughs> In this video, we're gonna take this camera right here and kit it out with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Hollywood cinema gear and then compare the footage against a kit lens in an ultimate B-roll battle. Hey, Peter McKinnon, are B-roll battles still relevant? No, let's do it. And because I don't want the heat of the entire comment section on the backs of my shoulders, I've brought a friend. This is Patrick Tommaso. He's a really, really great DP. He's also an amazing YouTuber and he knows more about the Lumix S5 than I do, at least for now. Okay, so let's slow down the pace of this video and let's jump into lenses. All right, so let's talk about lenses here, Patrick. We have a lot of different things that we can play with. We have the Hawk anamorphics here. What do we have over here? These are the Leica Sumilux. So this is kind of like going a little bit more vintage anamorphic style look. If you've ever seen the movie Moonlight, absolutely gorgeous film that was shot on Hawk anamorphics, sorry. And then if you want to go over to a more clean spherical lens, which is probably a little bit more similar to what we want to play with later on a non-kitted version of the S5, because Leica actually makes a lot of the glass for Lumix as well. These are the Leica Sumilux. So if you've ever seen David Fincher's Mank or Mindhunter, that was shot on these beautiful bad boys. I want to play with these so badly, but, but we're not going to do that. We're actually going to use these lenses right here because they're $50,000 a lens, and that sounds more impressive. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get this little guy into a nice cage, which will let us put all of our bells and whistles on this camera. So what cage are we using today? This is the small rig cage. This is like 150 bucks. So let's throw this S5 right in there. <laughs> Look at me go. I'm supposed to be a professional. While you do that, uh, one of the interesting things that we have to do here, now it could be confusing because Leica makes a lot of Lumix lenses and L-mount is actually part of an alliance with Sigma and Leica, but these lenses are actually PL mount, which stands for positive lock. So this is basically an industry standard for cinema lenses because they literally lock onto the camera using. So we have to use this little adapter that's gonna go from L mount to PL and sort of defeats the purpose of positive lock because at that point we're kind of using a regular lock with a lock, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it is necessary to use lenses like this. So it will work even though it's not the most fancy solution. Like that, and then we're gonna lock it. The focus feel on these cinema lenses, like I wish I could just describe it to you, it's like feather. You can literally just gently put your finger on it and get the focus out of it, which is, I mean, all of these are focused by wire, which means there's electronics that are dealing with that for you, but this is like tactile feel that you know where you're in focus and obviously all the markings that we put upside down because this mount has been a bit silly, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. Now we are right side up, the adapter is working. It is now time to go back on the camera. Not the, not the best solution, because this adapter is still a little bit wobbly, but it'll work for us. Professionals. Boom. Okay, so we've collected pretty much every single piece that we need to build our camera kit before we're actually gonna throw it on the Ronin 2 later so we can get some stabilized shots. Um, what do we have here? The first thing we need to do is, now that we have it in the cage with the lens, we gotta throw this on some rails. And so rails are gonna allow us to add things like this RE High 5 follow focus. How much does uh, this thing go for? That kit, which includes this piece over here, uh, with everything is like $25,000. Well, it's the best of the best. There's obviously like more affordable like follow focus, but this is like, if you're working in cinema, this oh. is the one that you wanna use. This is a Teradek Bolt 3000. So this is gonna let us do wireless monitoring. So when we're pulling focus, the AC or the focus puller can sit there and actually see what we're shooting completely wirelessly. And yeah. what's interesting is like a lot of this stuff does, like you said, has alternative alternatives that are a lot cheaper, but we're going for best of the best here just to see what this thing is actually capable of. And the juxtaposition also of how this is literally a quarter of the price, if not less, like 1% of the price of some of this stuff, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 2%. Um, so it's just fun to put really expensive gear on a really cheap mirrorless camera. This is the matte box from Polar Pro. The reason why we go with this one, is just like super light. And then you can throw VNDs into it. You can throw polarizers and it allows you to get rid of sun flares on the front. And what's great about this system is you're not, most of us will be typically used to filter thread mounts, but when this thing's all rigged up, you just want something really quick that can just sort of slide out. So when you got to switch to a polarizer or a different strength of ND or a different exposure stop, it's just boop. Okay, let's, uh, let's build this. Okay, so we have our final camera build out. We got to throw this on this, which is well above our pay grade for sure. Uh, so I brought in a tech. Mitch, can you come and throw this on the Ronin 2, please, for us? Because I also don't want to damage this kit Absolutely. at all. <laughs> so 
So I'm jumping in here to speak to one other item that we're adding on top of this kit, and that is the small HD 703 Bright. This monitor right here is like roughly $3,200, and this will allow the operator to be able to like frame their shots. And then we're gonna take another monitor where we're sending the signal with the Teradek to a director's monitor and an AC monitor so they can pull focus there. All right, so we have our final setup. So this like this camera right here is around like $2,200 with the, the lens that you have right here. And for this setup over here, we're $100,000 plus on this. We'll put its final number like right here. This is a beast, and I thought we would have a little showdown Absolutely. of B-roll. My friend George brought some motorcycles nearby, and we're gonna go and shoot some B-roll of some bikes. So let's, uh, let's do it. Taking a break. I'm cool. Okay, so for the purpose of this test, we literally have a Ronin against the Ibis of the S5. Straight up, just Ibis. <laughs> I'm using a kit lens, like literally a kit lens versus a Leica Sumalux 18 millimeter, like $50,000 lens. It's yeah. like a $200 lens compared to that thing. We're also shooting everything in 60 FPS just to maybe level the playing field a little bit because they have the whole Ronin M. So it's gonna keep things a little more steady for me along with the Ibis. So it should feel pretty gimbal-like with 60 frames per second. So I'm thinking for the first shot, what we're gonna do is a follow of Mitch walking up to this custom motorcycle, getting on, and that's just like a one and done follow shot. Let's try it. Hey. All right, so this is a two-man operation. I will be operating the gimbal and the camera, and I'll be just focusing on just the frame. Brandon will be my AC, and he'll be pulling focus the external monitor here. Yeah, okay, rolling. Camera's rolling. And action. And then I think a second shot would be like him putting the helmet on close up. Hands off the bars. And okay, hands on the bars. Good recording. And then so when I yell action, you're gonna pull it up, stick the kickstart, and like turn the light on if we get. And action. And recording. And are you ready next time? A workout and a half. I already know mine look better, but it's fine. No, <laughs> Savage! <laughs> Savage! One thing that's interesting is because that's an 18 millimeter lens and this is 20, you're gonna see that his shots look a lot wider. It's wild how much the two millimeters actually makes quite a bit of difference. I wanna put this down, stop talking. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's head inside. Okay, be honest with me. Could you tell the difference between the $200 lens and the $50,000 lens? I'll give you a second to think about your answer. Yes. In my personal opinion, you could definitely see the difference. Like the $50,000 lens looked really, really good. But there was one shot in particular where I actually thought the kit lens looked better. Kit lens, well done. Ah. But overall, I think it's fair to assume that when you're kitting a camera out with hundreds of thousands of dollars of gear, that you're going to see an optical difference in the image. But 
I genuinely think both held up really, really well in both circumstances. And we're only seeing the differences because we're putting the images side by side. If you had saw that kit lens shot, you'd be like, that's great footage of a motorcycle. Great job, Patrick, bravo. And if you saw the image shot with the higher cinema gear, you'd be like, that looks really amazing too. What I think is so interesting about mirrorless cameras in 2022 and specifically the Lumix S5 is that you get such great value for your money. Even with a kit lens, that footage looks so great and you can go and shoot a travel vlog or capture fan family memories and then you can start kidding it out to be able to shoot commercials and be able to shoot client work and anything else that you want. And it's the exact same camera body and you only paid, maybe when it's on sale, $1,500. But generally that's a $2,000 camera body with a $200 lens. Very, very impressive stuff. If you guys like this video, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. And we will most definitely catch you guys in the next one. A big shout out to Patrick Tomaso for being a part of this video. Please go show him some love with a subscription and also shout out to Ontario Camera for letting us play with all your expensive gear. That stuff means the world. So if you guys have any rental needs and you're in Toronto, you wanna shoot a short film or a weird camera comparison video, they're, they're your rental house. And then you can hit up Patrick and he'll give you great suggestions on pizza and tell you amazing things about cinema. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.